Before we start the video off, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, turn the notification bell on. I've been streaming lately, so go over and check out my Twitch. Uh, all that good stuff worked really hard on this video, and as I think one of the first of the Cosmo Ghost Rider power scaling videos on YouTube, I had to work hard. Uh, this, of course, will be one of the first of its kind, so I hope you guys enjoy, and let's begin. Now, if you are here for, you know, the lore behind Cosmic Ghost Rider, Frank Castle's version of Ghost Rider, and, you know, just a breakdown of the story in general, that's not what this is. What this is, is pure power scaling, so I'll be reviewing some of the feats, going through them, how they scale, and overall, revealing just how strong Cosmic Ghost Rider is. So one of the first things we're going to talk about is his feat of entangling and binding Thanos. Now, he did this with his chain, which is cool and all, and Thanos wasn't able to get out, and this Thanos, of course, scales above Galactus with prep time, uh, just for a casual power scale right there. And Ghost Rider explained that Thanos actually wasn't able to move at all because these very chains were forged by the bones of Sidorak. Sidorak is a being that, you know, scared Galactus in the classic stories, should scale outside of natural law, and his bones make these riders chains and easily hold down Thanos, which is quite impressive. Um, when they faced the Annihilation Horde, um, Thanos was actually kind of struggling, at least it's implied he was, and Ghost Rider casually one-shot them all. Like, he was joking with them, but he one-shot them all, and as you know, the Annihilus Horde is something that could even threaten the regular Marvel Universe uh, by itself, given its sheer mass volume of numbers. Um, at one point, when he stumbled into Galactus, Galactus fully blasted him twice, stating that this should be enough to eradicate this random new being and that the power cosmic had the power to do so and when he blasted ghost rider who's joking around at the time it did no damage and ghost rider's like yeah dude like <laughs> you're not gonna affect me big guy so yeah he, galactus was absolute fodder to even you know regular early cosmic ghost rider um of course you know Galactus eventually makes him his herald, so that's where he gets the power cosmic tie-in from for Ghost Rider. Um, King Thanos actually states, even after one-shotting prepped and amped Galactus, that he cannot kill the cosmic Ghost Rider. And that um, Ghost Rider even tanks a hit from him, and that's when he reveals, you know, Ghost Rider, you can't beat me, but I can't beat you either, so let's just hang out together. Also, later on to a different version of Thanos, Cosmic Ghost Rider once again reaffirms that Thanos does not have the ability to permanently put down a being like Cosmic Ghost Rider. At one point in the story, Cosmic Ghost Rider is detected as being faster than the Chitauri tracking system. And for a reference to how fast Cosmic Ghost Rider is, the only thing they and Thanos had to compare uh, Ghost Rider's speed to was that of the Phoenix Force itself. If you haven't seen anything on the Phoenix Force or don't know how crazy powerful Phoenix Force is, go check out my Phoenix Force video. I do a good job breaking down the various feats of the Phoenix Force. Um, he at one point faced off with an entire horde of superheroes, the likes of Hulk, Thor, Beta Ray Bill, the X-Men, etc. He was joking around, talking about how he was built for something like this and proceeds to mollywop all of the hero despite the fact that they kept pouring in, pouring in more numbers, stronger foes, Cable was directing the onslaught. It absolutely did not matter and they got completely annihilated by the likes of Cosmic Ghost Rider. At one point, um, the thing dies in the story and Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four get desperate and this is when they decide they are going to go to heaven and find Ben and bring him back after Cosmic Ghost Rider reveals he's actually been to heaven. So, they go up to heaven when they get there because of Cosmic Ghost Rider's, you know, place in existence. He is considered a threat. They get attacked and actually fight their way through heaven, meet the creator. The creator is even hating on Cosmic Ghost Rider, which is quite impressive that he was able to lead them up to heaven, fight through, and then talk to the creator who is also referred to as the writer, so quite impressive. Um, at one point, Phoenix Force 
lost its mind in a battle because it had to do more work due to the fact Cosmic Ghost Rider was sitting out. And when this occurred, the Phoenix Force lost its mind, was gonna go completely all out, and Ghost Cosmic Ghost Rider casually knocked Phoenix Force amped Jean Grey out. Um, at one point, uh, in a confrontation with the Watcher, the Watcher actually explains that while Cosmic Ghost Rider jokes around and doesn't think what he does matters, he is the most six significant character in Marvel history, and that everything in any possible reality, so existence itself, all of that is tethered to Cosmic Ghost Rider, an event he does could very well destroy creation. That's how significant he is. He was stated while, you know, in a really sad state to be the most powerful superhero on earth by Reed Richards. Um, at one point in a conflict with an alternate timeline version of Thanos, he um, is able to beat this Thanos. Now this Thanos had found a way to kill him in the future. Um, this doesn't matter as when Cosmic Ghost Rider clashes with him, he reveals that he constantly has to hold back his power. He said even walking around, he has to consistently and extremely suppress himself because his sheer power, even just walking around, destroys the very worlds he walks on. It's like even worse than, you know, World Breaker Hulk famously does. And he put down that Thanos. Um... He also revealed he was going to give that Thanos penance, and he laughed and said, oh, the penance stare doesn't matter. And Cosmic Ghost Rider said, hey, bro, I don't think you understand. Penance also means punishment, and just tears his head off and crumbles his skull. Um, at one point, Cosmic Ghost Rider was easily able to keep up with King Thor and She-Hulk, who were both attacking him, and at this point, he's holding back by a lie. It's implied several times throughout this altercation, as well as he says, I wasn't even trying, but that actually did hurt when you guys combined to blast me, so maybe I'll actually try. Um, so yeah, he wasn't trying at all, and he was able to keep up with them. Uh, he tanked a punch from both Captain America and Black Panther. On the surface, this looks incredible silly, and that it doesn't matter, but both characters at the time were amped by celestial energy that resided within their suits. So they were celestial powered Captain America, Black Panther, and he tanked that hit. He was able to kill a dark celestial before with his penance there. Now this, I'm gonna give you the basic outline of dark celestial scaling, and then I'm gonna get a little more in depth. So on the basic side of things, Cosmic Ghost Rider scales above dark celestials. Dark celestials scale above regular celestials regular celestials make odin look like an ant in comparison to their power odin is capable of fighting infinity galactus seth on a hyperversal level even when it you know suppressed so you should be outer versal so there's multiple layers of that and cosmic ghost rider vastly outscales the Celestials who vastly outscale Odin and he even outscales the Dark Celestial. So I'm going to get a little more into the details. So he returns with the head of a Dark Celestial and reveals, yeah, you know, I casually bopped it. Um, a group of these Dark Celestials alone were capable of killing off the Celestial race, infecting them and getting rid of them. Tony Stark at one point during this crisis, looking up at the sky with his group, states that it's, quote, reigning dead celestials that's how bad the massacre was when the dark celestials attack captain marvel then states that the avengers are quote gnats in comparison to these dark celestials this includes even the likes of king thor or old man thor a much mature version of thor basically and captain marvel they can't do anything to regular celestials the one dark celestial cosmic ghost rider killed was actually cleanly able and blatantly able to rip off the head of a celestial. This was actually shown when Loki showed up with them and revealed and called them to be the final host of celestials. Um, Odin then states that not even the Odin sword or an enchanted Yarbjorn could crack the dark celestial armor. 
which should put them above the fourth host. And he stated nothing could stop them. So you got to remember, Odin's clashed with Celestials before. He said eventually got overwhelmed, nothing he could do. And these Dark Celestials overwhelmed those Celestials. There was definitely nothing he could do. As it was stated, Odin even compared to regular Celestials who are fodder, he was stated to be an ant. The Dark Celestials are confirmed later on to have felled every Celestial in existence. Odin then states, you know, recounting prior events, that he had fought the Celestials with, quote, more might than has ever been assembled at any time in the history of this realm. We face them without a chance in this world. So he summoned more power than any time in history for Odin. Still got slapped. So this would be peak power Odin getting slapped. Ghost Rider, Cosmo Ghost Rider later confirms he scales both both Dark Celestials and at least Celestials because he says he's casually put bullets in the brains of Celestials before. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. If you're looking forward to some Cosmo Ghost Rider battles, let me know. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, check out my Twitch, check out my Patreon, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great day. It's been your favorite villain and I am out.